You so fucking precious when you smile. Yeah. Hit it from the back and drive you wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, I lose myself up in those eyes. What is up, Zombie Nation? It's your boy Dame, and welcome back to a brand new video. You know the one, the only, the Mecca himself, the cool-looking sunglasses emoji king has been sharing information with content creators about Infinite Warfare Zombies. So if you're not an Infinite Warfare Zombies fan, this is probably not a video for you. But if you are a hardcore fan like I know many of you are, this is going to be one dope video. We have some unseen, unheard, unspoken of information ever about Infinite Warfare Zombies. What was cut, what could have been in the game, and what some of it means coming in today's video so homies hold tight if you enjoyed this video please be sure to go down there show some love and smack that like button if you are new to the Damon that game channel be sure to hit that subscribe button for the best call of duty content on all of youtube and please oh please don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you're notified of when i upload my videos because why else do you subscribe but anyway let's not dilly dally anymore hold tight sit back and let's get straight into that video so let's start this video off with a tweet from the Emoji King himself, Lee Ross. Drop some Infinite Warfare Zombies info via DM on Red Panda Mango, MJPW Gaming, Damon at Game, Lime Tiger, and the Matman98. Make sure to hit them up so they share the wealth with everyone else. Man, this guy is a poet and he just didn't know it. Cool looking sunglasses emoji. And I've gone through all the YouTubers, including a codename Pizza, who is also somebody you may have watched about information that he got, so we'll leave that information to the end. I've gone through all the YouTubers, or all the ones that I could, and tried to get as much information of what was actually told to these guys to bring it in to today's video. We're going to start off with the information that Lee sent me first, which to me is the most exciting information. Now I must clarify, none of us asked him for this information. They just showed up in our DMs. We, we didn't ask this guy whatsoever. But this is the information that Lee Ross sent myself. I quote, We had once planned a timed escape mode for zombies in Spaceland. The goal would be to get to the park's entrance safely and escape the park. Starting off in Polar Peaks. We didn't get it to the quality state we wanted, so we wound up cutting it in order to make the best map we could with zombies in Spaceland. Cool looking sunglasses emoji, he also says it would have translated to the other maps as well had we fully pursued it. And a second cool looking sunglasses emoji, this is amazing news and something that has been on all the Infinite Warfare brains for a long time. When the game first came out, data miners delved into the files and there was something called Escape the Park. There were so many of us at the entrance of the park of Zombies in Spaceland thinking, we need to get out of this, we need to go, we, we need to escape this park. It says in the code we need to escape the park, we need to escape. It was true, there was a mode where we had to escape the park. I could imagine probably we'd start off in the Polar Peak, somewhere like that, and we'd have to battle our way through zombies in Spaceland. I mean, the map's not that big, so there must have been some big boy enemies to stop us from going. Maybe there were aliens on every single stage, a big horde of brutes, or maybe just an insane amount of zombies to stop you from getting from A to B. But this was hella dope news. When I had this in my, in my inbox, I was just like, wow, man, this is... This is amazing news. So that's the first bit of information that we got. There was a game mode, a full game mode, that was actually cut from Infinite Warfare, which I'm gutted about. But at the same time, they couldn't have made the game mode for me any better. It was, it was perfect. Now the rest of the information comes from the other content creators. So I'm going to name who it was, and I suggest you go to their channels because the majority of them have made dedicated videos based on the information that was given them. I'm just here to tell you what I said. The other content creators are making videos going into more explanation about the information they were actually given. My information was the beginning bit, so go and check out the content creators because I would feel bad to say this information and then then not, you know, get your sub or at least a like on their latest video. So please be sure to check them out. This one came from Ian at Red Panda Mango. Awesome name there, dude. Awesome name. Panda says, hey, just wondering, in Infinite Warfare Zombies, was there any cut fate and fortune cards and perks? I was just wondering because I saw Codename Pizza's video on cut things. So I was just asking, was there any FNF cards and perks that were cut? Lee Ross responds, yes, but not in the direct sense of being cut. More like 
retooled. Ian says, oh, care to expand? I would love to know more. Love what your team are doing. Love heart emoji. Lee Ross responds, we have cards that behaved one way, but we wound up balancing them to operate differently. Some fake cards becoming fortune cards as an example. Cool looking sunglasses emoji. Ian then asks, if you don't mind me asking, what happened to Deadeye and Change Choose being added to other maps? The most important question of all. Where the hell is Change Choose? Where the hell is Deadeye? I want Deadeye in Zombies in Space Land. Everybody wants it. Lee Ross knows we wants it. Lee Ross said he was going to give it to us, but we never got Deadeye Dewdrops in Zombies in Space Land. I mean, Change Choose is all right, but Deadeye Dewdrops. Lee Ross responds to this. Time became an issue. We intended to make those changes as mentioned, but ultimately we had to get the Super East Egg right, and that took precedence over everything else. I need to publicly apologize to the community about that at some point. I owe them that. Cool looking sunglasses emoji. That is the apology. And that <laughs> I still want Dead Eye Dewdrops. Can you please just put Dead Eye Dewdrops in Zombies in Space Land? We even made a petition for it. It got like a hundred signatures, but we still made a petition. Dead Eye Dewdrops is an amazing perk. It's basically a dead shot daiquiri, but it's just so good. You know, coupled with the actual molar sentinel, it was just it was godly. It was absolutely godly. So there we go. Fate and fortune cards. There were some that were meant to be fake cards and some that were meant to be fortune. They were jiggled around a little bit, but most importantly, they were well aware that Dead Eye Dewdrops and Chain Choose were meant to be implemented into all the maps, but time just became an issue and they wasn't able to do it. The second most important bit of information out of all the stuff I got. I love this. Go and check out my man, Red Panda Mango. His links will be in the description. The next content creator I managed to hit up and get some information out of is the Mapman98. Again, links in the description. I expect they're going to make dedicated videos on this information. So his links are in the description. Be sure to go show this guy some love. If Lee Ross is reaching out to these guys, they're well worth checking out. The Mapman98 asks, was there a set list of celebrities you wanted for each DLC? Would you be willing to name a few? And what ultimately made you settle for the ones you chose? And Lee Ross responds, There were celebrities we wanted, but wound up not pursuing them for multiple reasons. Availability, cost, etc. The cast we landed on was phenomenal, and I wouldn't change a single actor for anybody else. So there were other cast members. There were talks of... Is it Captain Picard? Or, oh, I mean, I'm, that sounds like I'm swearing, but one of the guys from Star Trek, I swear he was going to come to the Beast from Beyond. That could have been a thing. We didn't even have a celebrity in the Beast from Beyond. So that could have been cost. It could have been cut. We all thought that was going to be one of the characters or data from Star Trek as well. We thought that was going to be a character. There could have been some other big characters as well. As you know, the most expensive characters in the game, without a doubt, was Paul Rubens and David Hasselhoff. Now, I don't mean to make any of the other actors in there sound cheap, but they were just the biggest actors, and we just know they would have cost the most money. They may have planned to have just as big as actors at David Hasselhoff and Paul Rubens throughout the whole map, but instead we have Pam Greer and Kevin Smith. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to belittle these characters. They were amazing, and I wouldn't change anything for the game. But hey, there were other characters coming to this game mode, and that's, uh, that's some hella dope news. Now, the next lot of information we got comes from MJPW Gaming. He has 100% made an actual video on this information and he is more suited to tell you exactly what went on and what it meant because he is a pretty big horror fan where I'm not much of a horror fan to be fair though I do love zombies. I did hit him up in the DMs, he didn't reply but he did make a video, I'm gonna link that video down below so after you've watched this one go and watch that one where he goes into more detail but he asked what was the inspiration behind the slasher in Raven the Redwoods? Lee Ross responds he was inspired by a few different slashers, pun intended for his name. Jason with the mask, Michael Myers with the way no matter how fast you run, he is always there. Leatherface with the constant revving of the chainsaw to get you spooked. A tiny bit of Freddy Krueger with the concept that he appeared in a dreamlike state while in rave mood. The slasher embodied qualities from all the horror film legends that scared the shite out of me when I was a kid. Cool looking sunglasses emoji. He then goes on to say his story was a playoff of Groundhog's Day, but was meant to be a much darker version of it. Kevin repeatedly reliving the nightmare of waking up to his best friend being murdered, and of course eventually learning he was the one killing his best friend. On the boat at the end, leading to the boss fight, you see he is totally confused and cannot accept this grim reality. Cool looking sunglasses emoji. This set the stage for making people believe Willard was the enemy when in fact he was meant to be a hero 
in disguise. He also likened it to The Dark Knight Rises, where in that film Bane is seen as a villain, when in retrospect, Batman is the real villain. Bane attempts to free the people of Gotham from oppression, though in a morbid way, while Batman being a billionaire, of course wants to restore the status quo where the powerful and elite remain at the top of the food chain. Cool looking sunglasses emoji. Now take from this what you will. Again, MJWP made an awesome video going into this. He's probably watched all of those films, so he's probably more likely to tell you more information on what actually Lee Ross said. But I know that Lee Ross took huge inspiration from so much whilst making this game. For example, Sharon Shuffle was based on the Horcruxes from Harry Potter and we also have like the Dark Knight Rises and Freddy Krueger and Batman coming in to Raven the Redwoods. Sharon Shuffle was also based on Lee's background and his growing up as well. That's why it was heavily set in New York, the hometown of Lee Ross and based in the 70s. The Beast from Beyond was basically set in Extinction. That was his extinction love coming through from the beast from beyond and i'm not really sure about the attack of the radioactive thing or zombies in spaceland but even with his family there was lots of sayings like cash me outside if you don't know the famous saying that was also implemented into the game as well because of his kids you can tell this whole game is heavily inspired by lee ross's experiences through his life it's got a very very personal touch and I love it. Now there was some more information given out to Codename Pizzas as well. Some of you may have already watched his video on that, so if you have, you may have already heard the content that's about to come up right now, but if you haven't, Lee Ross spilled some beans to Codename Pizzas. So hold tight, there's a lot of messages here and a lot of information to take in. So let's start with the first message. And by the way, Codename hit me up in the DMs with this information to actually make a video, so I'm not just taking this from him. Your boy Codename Pizzas is a legend. Thank you, my sir. And uh, sorry the video is like four months late. Okay, here's a few tidbits. In Spaceline, we were planning on allowing players to ride around in the bumper cars. Bumper cars for a short duration, but opted for more tense feeling while walking through the space. Still to this day, when I walk through there, I still feel my heartbeat jump a few ticks. Cool looking sunglasses emoji. In Raven and Redwoods, we were planning on originally having a celebrity not being a celebrity at all, but rather a survivor that Willer had lost track of. His concept image had him looking like a mountain man, but one that hunts the undead. He was going to be a badass in the sense that he couldn't be summoned in to wipe enemies out drop supplies and help defend locations. When I was able to get hold of Kevin Smith's agent, we were able to come to terms on his likeness and decided to stay faithful to the pop culture era references. In hindsight, it was 100% the right thing to do. Yes, it was. In Shaolin Shuffle, Andre was originally going to be a Black Panther. However, due to sensitivity of the character's origins, we opted to redirect his style. He originally was dressed in all in black, rocked an African pin and had a Black Panther logo. I had to read to all of his VO which had already been written which sucked but I was still happy with the outcome of the character and the episode. In Attack of the Radioactive Thing we had planned on going purely black and white for the entirety of the episodes. Damn I'm so glad you didn't. The concept was we were in a black and white film from the 50s. Players would have to restore colour through an easter egg but in early testing we found that players were stuck in black and white for long periods of time which unfortunately didn't let the art of the level shine especially the Krogs. In the end, the addition of Elvira and the strife she had against Willard helped create the scenario that she was controlling the film within some degree from within the film. I like this direction much more because it set up the little witty conflict amazingly, which it was perfect. Now on to the last one, in the Beast from Beyond, we almost went full blown extinction with the hives and drill. However, I didn't want us to lose sight on the fact that this was zombies. The cryptids are really tough and it raised the skill bar fairly high so we opted to reduce the extinction elements a bit. Funny thing about that last episode is I always knew the cryptids were coming back and had been teasing from roughly the first week after releasing Infinite Warfare. Cool looking sunglasses emoji, I love saying that so much. Codename, thank you for hitting me up the information and Lee Ross, Thank you for just giving this information out because to some people the game is dead and to many it was always dead but to most of us. This game is by far one of the best zombie modes I have ever played and it will always hold a special place in my heart. I loved it. I've got 1200 hours gameplay. I've completed all the easter eggs many 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 times. Hundreds of times and I still struggle on some of them. Absolutely love this game. Homies, I hope you've took some valid information away from this video. I hope this game will always remain in your hearts as well. I'm really, really glad Lee is 
just part of our community is 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 absolutely awesome to have a developer so involved with us so open with us and is absolutely awesome unfortunately guys that is the end of the video it's been a long one if you've made it to the end let me see some hashtag i made it in the comments down below so i know that you made it to the end but if you have, you've been an absolute legend. Thank you for coming out to watch this video. Thank you for all the constant support on the channel throughout 2017 and coming back through to 2018. Your support is crazy and I appreciate every single one of you. Homies, have an amazing day. Keep it positive, yo. And until the next one, this is your boy Dane. And I'm out.